Hello everyone, my name is Anuj Pachel and I am a second year medical student at GMC Nagpur. I make videos on anything that would inspire me and also help you out. So consider subscribing especially if you are a medical student or a medical aspirant. So the topic of discussion today is the breast or the mammary gland. I'd like to tell you that the mammary gland is a structure found only in mammals. It is a modified sweat gland formed over the pectoral skin. Now its relations are as follows. It lies over the muscles of the pectoral region that is pectoralis major, subclavius and pectoralis minor. Then uh, pectoralis minor and subclavius are deep to pectoralis major. Inferiorly it lies over the external oblique muscle and laterally over the serratus anterior muscle. Quickly telling that the breast has one peculiar uh, thing in the superficial fascia that is the nipple areolar complex. So this is actually present in the fourth intercostal space and mid clavicular line however the position may vary very much uh, because of different sizes of breasts and different nutritional status of people. Now coming to the breast it lies actually it lies in the superficial fascia it does not lie deep to the deep fascia but it is actually superficial to it. So it is a subcutaneous structure and if you want to divide the breast it is divided into four quadrants uh, by a line passing vertically mid clavicular and horizontally through the nipple. So as you can see here in this diagram this is the medial side this is lateral side so this will be the sternal side and this will be the humeral side. So this is upper medial, upper lateral, lower medial and lower lateral parts where the vertical line passes through the mid clavicular line and the horizontal is approximately the fourth intercostal space. Okay, so talking about the tissue as a whole, there are two types of tissue in any kind of gland. This is also a gland, mammary gland. So the two types of tissue that we have here are first is the parenchyma, parenchyma and second is the stroma. So parenchyma of any gland is basically the functional units of the gland which produce the secretion especially in exocrine glands and the stroma part is the extracellular matrix surrounding the gland which supports it. So here the parenchyma is basically the lobules and the stroma is basically adipose. So adipose is nothing but fat and lobules are actually lined with cuboidal epithelium which may change its shape depending upon its activity so that it may be flattened when inactive, cuboidal when moderately active and uh, then columnar when highly active. So the breast lobule is actually made up of a lot of small small lobes and these lobes are uh, then continuous with the ducts of the gland. So the ducts then open into the nipple areolar complex. There are about uh, 10 to 20 openings of the lactiferous duct into the nipple and in the areolar region there is some dilatation of this duct known as the sinuses. Continuation of the sinuses backwards deep into the breast tissue will give you the balloon like structures that is the lobes and the lobules. So what happens is that the outer stratified squamous keratinized epithelium of the skin of the nipple is continuous inward to certain millimeters with the lactiferous duct but then it suddenly changes into a double layered cuboidal epithelium. So the superficial layer of the cuboidal epithelium of the ducts is actually the proper cuboidal epithelium and it goes on to become the secretory epithelium in the lobules. But there is another peculiar layer which is present uh, as the second or the deep layer to the cuboidal epithelium that is known as the myoepithelial layer. So myoepithelial layer is basically a layer having a lot of muscle cells uh, which are uh, exactly flattened and they have uh, various actin and myosin cross linkages so that they can contract uh, in the presence of oxytocin. The important point to note here is that the extracellular matrix or the stroma of the breast is differentiated into something called as ligaments. So ligaments here it is they are not classical ligaments joining two bones but rather they hold the breast and give it shape and so these ligaments are known as ligaments of Cooper. They arise from the retromammary space and goes all the way over to the dermis of the skin so that the breast have the proper shape. One important point to consider here is that the upper lateral quadrants of the breast in some women uh, may give rise to something called as axillary tail of spins. So axillary tail of spins is nothing but an extension or the outgrowth of the upper lateral quadrants of the breast which may go out from your pectoral region and go uh, into the axilla. So what happens is that something like this comes out. So this is the axillary tail of spins and it comes out through this opening in the deep fascia going to the axilla. So this foramen through which this axillary tail is passing that is known as foramen of Langerhans. The foramen of Langerhans and axillary tail of spins are all uh, in relation with the breast. Now why this tail is important is that a lot of time carcinomas are present here and it is important that uh, we screen for them too. Not only the normal radiological finding of the breast but also the tail. 
coming towards the arterial supply of the breast the breast is actually supplied by arteries near it almost every structure in the body is supplied by arteries which are near it so similarly the breast is in relation to the subclavian and then the axillary artery so the subclavian artery gives its first branch that is the internal thoracic artery which goes uh, next to the sternum deep in the thorax so internal thoracic artery will actually send out perforators which go out of the thorax and get into the pectoral region and then supply the breast parasternally so these are the perforators of the internal thoracic artery as you can see here now these have numbers so the second third and fourth perforators of the internal thoracic artery which is actually a branch of subclavian artery goes and goes on to supply the breast next thing we can see here that after crossing the outer bord of the first strip to the lower bord of teres major muscle we have an artery here that is known as the axillary artery the first branch of axillary artery is superior thoracic artery which forms a little part of blood supply of the breast next part is the acromion thoracic artery acromion thoracic artery is actually a small trunk which divides into four trunks that is acromial clavicular deltoid and pectoral so the pectoral branch of the acromion thoracic artery supplies the breast and the next thing is that there is something called as the lateral thoracic artery which is also the uh, branch of second part of axillary artery which goes on to supply the breast laterally in some books it is also mentioned that the uh, subscapular arteries also supply the breast posteriorly and also the posterior inter costal arteries along with all these arteries so that was the arterial supply of the breast the venous drainage follows exact same pattern uh it it drains into the internal mammary vein the subclavian vein and the axillary vein respectively the most important point however to consider in this is actually the lymphatic drainage of the breast so in a moment i'll under you'll understand why the lymphatic drainage is much more important than any other thing of the breast so let's talk about it so this is the diagram for breast the deep lymphatics of the breast which actually drain the parenchyma and the stroma of the gland passes its lymphatics to axilla parasternal spaces and posterior intercostal spaces the axilla actually has five groups of lymph nodes there is the anterior axillary gr gr uh, group of lymph nodes which receive about 75% of the lymph of the breast the parasternal receives 20 to 25 and the posterior intercostal 5% the anterior axillary lymph nodes give its lymph to your posterior and central group of lymph nodes also the lateral group of lymph nodes will drain into the central group of lymph nodes and finally the central will drain into the apical and supraclavicular group of lymph nodes parasternal lymph nodes will actually communicate with the other side of the breast via the internal mammary lymph nodes and the tracheobronchial tree and the posterior intercostal lymph nodes will actually go uh, into the back side and drain into the posterior intercostal spaces now let me tell you why it is important to that we must go into the clinical correlations of the thing known as breast one of the most leading causes of death all around the world is breast cancer and breast cancer is um uh, a very dangerous thing if it is advanced what do i mean that cancers have stages and if uh, when i say that cancer is in advanced stage that means it has already metastasized so a metastatic neoplasia or carcinoma of breast is metastasizing through this lymphatic channels and some venous channels there are only three ways by which any cancer can spread from its primary origin to secondary or the first side of spread can be directly when a tumor breaks down and goes into a sterile cavity such as peritoneum so what happens is that sometimes a tumor cells break down and enter sterile cavity of peritoneum which are metastatic in nature and then they go on to infect the ovary so if an ovarian cancer is actually secondary to the breast cancer that is known as a krukenberg's tumor the another way in which a tumor can spread to other parts of the body especially in the central nervous system is via your venous connection so the vertebral venous plexuses are directly connected to your cns and hence the tumor can spread from your breast to cns and the other organs are basically supplied by lymphatics so via lymphatics connection your tumor can go on to other tissues and also via parasternally they can go to other side of the breast that was about the spread of breast cancer so that was as we are speaking about clinical let me elaborate a little bit more on breast cancer what happens is that uh, in our country especially uh, women are not really aware about um, breast cancer and stuff i mean they are but they seem to ignore it a lot so usually there is something called a self breast examination which i suggest that every lady who is watching this video perform on yourself so there is a specific way this way exactly that how you can do a self breast examination under that you can find yourself some palpable masses so for example any mass which exceeds 
2 cm is readily palpable if you are getting that go to the doctor and get a x-ray or a ultrasonography whatever so cell breast examination is one of the important features that we can list under the clinical applications of studying the breast next thing i was talking about breast cancer so first of all let's say the patient comes to you with findings of pain or tenderness on the breast uh, discharge from the nipple or let's say retraction of the skin all of this can be a potential cause of breast cancer or other breast related problems such as mastitis etc so speaking about breast breast cancer specifically what happens is that if there is a, any form of uh, palpable lump what ideally should be done is that you should go for a U usd that is ultrason ultrasonography or an x-ray and what will happen is that in the x-ray you can see calcifications so calcification is nothing but calcium deposits on the necrotic cells which are found when uh, cancer is developing so and that can be confirmed by a biopsy a biopsy is when you enter a fine needle and uh, take out the few pieces of the tumor cells and then exam examine it under the microscope to see whether it is actually a neoplasia or a benign tumor so that is uh, what is biopsy and after biopsy if you have confirmed breast cancer here are, here is what the prognosis will look like if left like that it will develop obviously so what happens as it gradually develops is that the ligaments of cooper that i have talked about the breast cancer will actually cause tension on them and they will actually pull the skin the dermis backwards so it will it can cause retraction of the nipple it can cause dimpling of the skin so what happens is that any form of uh, skin abrasion over the pectoral region especially retraction uh, is a possible sign that there might be trauma to the ligaments of cooper which is characteristic of breast cancer next thing is that what happens uh, when lymphatic drainage is talked about actually there are two sets of lymphatics draining the breast the superficial group and the deep group the superficial group of lymphatics drains all the things of the skin except the nipple areolar complex so skin over the over the pectoral region except nipple areolar complex but the deep group of lymphatics drains the parenchyma stroma and the uh, nipple areolar complex the tumor might block the superficial lymphatic channels and what will happen is that accumulation of lymphatics in the superficial fascia so that would kind of give an inflammatory response an erythematous response and the skin would kind of turn uh, turn red and orange and the texture would become like that of an orange so this condition of the breast of the skin of the breast due to blockage of superficial lymphatics by the tumor cells this is known as pudy orange pudy uh, orange appearance of breast is a far, far advanced breast cancer uh, observation that we can do another form of breast cancer which is not the which is actually a carcinoma uh, but it is actually of the ducts uh, is known as the ductal carcinoma in situ so ductal carcinoma in situ is actually the carcinoma which is present along the duct thank you for watching this video i hope this helped you consider subscribing